everybody welcome back to another video today we're taking a look at the brand new harry potter set for summer 2022 this is 12 grimald place set 76408 with uh 1083 pieces eight plus and retails for 120 dollars uh, it just came out yesterday at the time of me filming this video and the time that it should be uploaded as well. Um, pretty freaking cool, I think. Comes with nine minifigures plus a cat. Um, and it's a very interesting set, one that I think a lot of people were hoping that they would someday make and that they actually engineered in a way that was like way more fancy than I think anybody had really planned that worked super, super well with the movies. So before we go into the set, I do want to give you guys a quicker look at the box. So here we go. The box is pretty dang big. It displays 12 Grimald Place and the circles show the building, how it can magically appear just like it does in the movie. We see all the characters as well with the Harry, Ron, and Hermione uh, regular people um, on the corner and then the Wizarding World on the um, top there. We have the characters, all of them together as well as lots of play features and display features on the back. A pretty fun looking set to look at um, for sure. Taking a look first at our first minifigure, this one is Tonks or Nymphadora Tonks. Um, she is seen for the first time in this movie and finally comes looking super fantastic. She comes with a new broom piece that I'm gonna just say, it honestly looks like a mop to me. I like that they did try to engineer a new broom, but to be honest, the other ones were kind of better in my opinion. They just could have stuck more detail on there, but nonetheless, um, she has a super great torso with printing that goes onto the legs. Very iconic outfit for her. Um, and then also on the back, the cool thing about Nymphadora is she can change her face and her hair. Um, in the burrow, when we first saw her, it was really disappointing because um, she only came with brown hair because she was in a brown hair phase, but we really see her with purple hair most of the time. And very briefly in this movie, um, do we see her with red hair? And so they gave her red hair. And I think that that is super cool. Um, the other fun thing about this character is she makes this little pig snout come out of her face during one of the scenes at Grimald Place, and they have included it on the back. Definitely not necessary. They could have made so many people happy just doing this combination here, and instead they included extra hair and an extra cool-looking face. So I think that that's really cool. Lego went really be above and beyond in this minifigure, uh, in my opinion. Next, we have Harry Potter, definitely the most boring. We have seen him in this jacket a thousand times, only now I think his pants are worse because they are so extremely bright blue. They don't look like jeans to me. Um, but same hair, same face, same facial expressions, same jacket. He's really just, I mean, really lackluster. You know, unsurprisingly, a Harry Potter minifigure comes in a Harry Potter set, but like this one is has been done before as like older Harry Potter, very standard blue jacket. So we get another one of him. And then we have Kingsley Shacklebolt, um, which I miss the minifigure series of this guy, so I'm happy enough to have him, but I know that he's he doesn't have as good of... Um, detail. He doesn't have his cloth cape and doesn't have the printing on his little cap. Um, though the torso printing does look very good and I like how it is brought down onto the legs and the hips as well. I think it looks pretty nice. There's the back. And he comes with a little bit of a different broom variation, which is kind of neat. I do like that they include included Kingsley in this set um, because he is part of the Order of the Phoenix. And so if you missed the minifigure like I did initially, it's great to be able to get him in this set, albeit a um, less cool version. And then we have Fred and George. They have brand new outfits um, that are accurate to the Grimald Place scene in the movie. I really like those little shirts with the stripes. They look super good. And then their faces are the ones that we've seen on repeat for the Lego minifigure series. Um, and I believe Diagon Alley as well. But really cool because they end up each having their own face. And well, each of their own two faces, and you can choose who you want to be Fred and who you want to be George. Funny thing included with one of them is the extendable earpiece, which hooks onto a wand and uses a, I would call it like um, a, a saddle piece. I've seen it used in Star Wars like that. And then there's a strange ear attached for the extendable ear. So this is supposed to be the extendable ear. The thought of extendable ears are really weird to me. They're weird in the books. They're weird in the movies. They are weird in Lego form because Legos don't have ears. And this ear looks extremely strange to me. Had they just printed a physical like ear, I think it would have looked better personally. I think it is just really strange as an ear. And it's very long. Very long. 
Next up, we have Molly Weasley in an exclusive outfit with the leg printing that goes down on, well, I guess it's technically skirt printing, very bright orange outfit and the same Molly Weasley face that we've seen before, which is honestly not my favorite. We've seen her with Aunt Beru as well. I think she looks really good. I really like this outfit. It's super cute. I'm glad that they changed her up and I was very surprised about the leg printing. Next, we have Ron Weasley, and he also has a new outfit accurate to this scene in his striped sweater. It looks really good, but other than that, he is the plain old same Ron that we get as the older version of Ron with the swooshy hair and two faces. Nothing new about that, but I know that we see, obviously, these characters continuously throughout the series, so the best thing they can do is change up the outfit, so I do appreciate a new, a new outfit. And then we have Sirius Black, and I think he looks really good. Um, this is the first Sirius outside of his Prisoner of Azkaban garb, and I really like it. Um, he looks very, very dapper in his olive green suit, and I like how the coattails are carried into the waist and the legs. He even has a belt. It's very cute. I think it works super, super well printing on the back, and then he does have his standard Sirius Black hair, and the head is just the same, but it's really a fantastic minifigure. I'm very pleased with this guy. And then we get Creature. He was definitely um, a really, I was very excited for Creature. His head is a hard plastic, which is definitely different, and he has a sculpted little mouth, but there's no printing on it, so it looks almost like he doesn't have a mouth. It's sort of weird, but I loved his hook nose. I think that looks perfect. Perfect to the movie. I don't think Creature's Nose actually looks like that in the book. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like a little snout. Um, but really cool. He's got his little elf robes that are just rags and tatters. And he's carrying an umbrella. Um, very, very cute minifigure. Again, I was just so surprised to see, well, this set in general, I, I felt like it could have been made for a long time. But then for them to actually include Creature, um, I think is just a fantastic addition. And he's one of my favorites to this set for sure. I love him. And then lastly, we get a new Crookshanks. Um, I love how the cat is angry because that's how Crookshanks is. And you know, the color isn't that bad for me. What just throws me off is that Crookshanks is supposed to be a super poofy cat. And this doesn't look like a poofy cat to me. So it's almost a little bit hard to tell that it's Crookshanks and it's super, super, super bright orange. If they had toned down the oranges a little bit, he might have looked a little less cartoony in my opinion. But I do love that they made him frown because he's kind of a grumpy kitty. Um, he also loves Sirius a lot. So they're friends. Um, I love how also we get uh, Crookshanks, but no Hermione. Not complaining because we always get Ron, Harry, and Hermione. But um, I'm glad they substituted a different character instead of her. Uh, but yeah, it is funny that we do get this Crookshanks here. Moving on to the house, as you can tell, um, it looks just like a set of London buildings, I think. Um, and I, the, the really cool feature of this set, both what's a really cool feature and a huge limiting factor in this set is, is the feature how um, the buildings can magically close and open to reveal 12 Grimmauld Place. So there they are closed. And this set, I think a lot of people were kind of disappointed by how small it ended up being for the cost. I think Lego is really pushing their luck with the prices that they are charging right now. Um, just totally ridiculous in my opinion. But um, just going up these buildings, these would be the muggle houses. We have, as you can tell, 11 and 13 Grimmauld Place with um, some little gates and I really like the brickings of the stairs. It makes it look like a street. The instructions have you pull out magically through these little lamp posts here that look pretty good on the sides. Moving up, we have a couple of balconies and some windows. And then the final set of windows and a very flat roof with a satellite dish and a couple of chimneys. Um, and then of course, when you pull the little lamp posts, 12 Grimald Place appears only to those who are part of the Fidelius charm. And you can see 12 Grimald Place there with a the real door, has its own gate and windows, and gate and windows, and windows again. The only difference between all of these doors is that only 12 Grimald Place actually opens. The other ones are just little facades, which is totally fine. Um, it opens just like that. So it's very, very cute from the outside. I do appreciate it. It might not be the size that people were expecting, but I really, really like the mechanic. Unfortunately, since I don't actively play with it, I'm not gonna get a whole lot of use out of the mechanic of it, but I love that it happens. I never imagined that they make 12 Grimmauld Place like this because they so easily could have made just one large building and made it 12 Grimmauld Place. 
Maybe people would have liked that better because the interior is rather lacking due to this mechanical feature, uh, but it is really cool in terms of like Lego structuring. And so the designer of this set, I think did a really good job with that. Okay, and taking a look at the back, this is the set in totally opened. If we close it and it will just be the two muggle buildings on the front, it looks like this. It is kind of nice because you do get a little bit of a different display option if you have a narrower space or a deeper space versus the other. Um, you can kind of choose, I mean, I don't know why you'd want to display it just with the muggle buildings, but it is an option. So it does, it does compact itself rather nicely. Um, but taking the whole thing out, you can see here that um, the mechanisms are controlled by these Technic hinges on both sides. And they use a little uh, chandelier piece to decorate the tops, which I think is a, a fun little added feature. Um, and in the interior, it, it's got, people have some complaints. We'll go through the little areas room by room and I'll give you guys a look and let you guys make a determination. But overall, I think it is a pretty impressive set still. Okay, and just off to the side here, what we're looking through, this is the facade of the muggle door and they included a door frame right inside, I guess so that it looks like a closet or something that maybe creature could be coming through. I'm not 100% sure. There are a couple of cups, goblets on top there just to give the space something else. I definitely would have loved to see a sticker on the inside here. I think that that's wasted space for sure. They maybe we could have even put something super tiny on this half little section here. Um, and then we do have the chandelier, which I guess counts, and then a couple of windows, but that is that first little platform. The biggest platform here is the one that actually opens up um, to the main door. Um, it is a little bit off-center, I guess, but you beggars can't be choosers. And it is the main um, dining area, so we have the really long table and the seats. In theory, this is supposed to sit much further back from the front door. There is a hallway. It's not in the right place, but at least they did include it. There's a couple of cups and goblets and a brand new printed piece for this line of um, Legos. And it is the boy who lies with a shiny P for profit and a little printed Harry Potter. I think that's very cute. I was really sick of The Boy Who Lived, so I'm glad they finally changed it. Looking off to the side, we have a big cupboard, and then here is a small little cabinet underneath here that has nothing in it, as well as this is supposed to portray a stove with another cabinet, um, and then pots and pans. You can remove this piece to give the minifigures more space, but honestly, it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, and that's about the biggest space is this one down in the center. I do like how you can fit four minifigures. You can probably even put five or six if you stick some here and then over here. Um, so you can fill it up. You can take characters that you have from other sets like um, Arthur Weasley and Ginny and Hermione, obviously, and add them. Um, on this side here, this is the inside of the other muggle building. And this is what is actually supposed to be the hallway. Um, this is Mrs. Black's portrait that screams when everybody's too loud. And in theory, this is the door is supposed to be somewhere around here. And then you walk towards the back of the kitchen. It's not accurate towards the movie, but they did include it. So I appreciate it for that. Um, we have a little stand here with like a lamp and a bowl. And then this contraption here is supposed to be a troll foot. Um, Nymphadora Tonks trips over the troll foot and sets off Mrs. Black's portrait. This is all in the book. Um, I do like how the troll foot acts as an umbrella stand, but you can also stick the character's brooms inside. Um, so you don't have to worry about storing those brooms somewhere else, which is actually kind of nice. Um, I do see the troll foot. Hopefully you do too. Um, this is supposed to be the thick foot and then the two toes. Again, I would have loved to see another sticker on the inside because it's just white. And this um, house is supposed to be really dreary. So all of the white honestly throws me off just a little bit. Moving up and we have a little sitting room with absolutely nothing in it other than a chair. Um, the chair piece is pretty cool and these little pieces that go along the back edge, those corners that are like curved, those are brand new. Um, and the chair build is pretty standard, but like literally not even a sticker on the side there. Um, I think they even probably could have put like a tiny lamp in the corner and they didn't even do that. So you can put a minifigure there just to fill the space, but literally that's what they were doing was filling the space. And this center room is quite pretty right here with the piano. Um, this is where it's really cool. I love in these sets how um, there you can do multiple different scenes. So in the Deathly Hollows part one, when they come back to Grimald Place, um, Ron and Hermione are playing on the piano. And so you can use this little mini piano and have them set here and displayed. So I do like that. Um, and then there's a little lamp here. And I guess that's a sheet of music. There are a couple of photographs in the corner there, just of people, nothing like 
super duper special. That's the black coat of arms. And then we have a couple of windows. The next room here is the portrait room. Um, and I think they did a really good job on this one. There is really nothing in this room other than the portrait. So I do like the fact that they did block off the window and added all of the little faces. You can't really tell exactly who anybody is other than on this side we have what looks to be Bellatrix and then probably Draco Malfoy. Um, but really, really cool. You can have Harry and Sirius stand in this little portrait area and it just looks great. I love the um, Latin written around the edges. Um, so, and then the burnt out faces is also really fun. You can see the coat of arms again as well, right in there. Um, but that is a, a super, super fun little um, hallway or well, I guess room inclusion that they did. And then over here we have Sirius Black's room, which I think is pretty cool that they included because we didn't actually see it in the movie, I don't believe, but there's a little red gemstone at the top, I guess just for decoration and a Gryffindor pennant. And then a very, very small modified bed with a stickered quilt and these two tan bats. Um, and they have never made tan bats before and I honestly don't know why they're there. I literally do not understand why those bats are hanging in Sirius Black's room. It is a little bit weird to me, but there it is. I do like that it's included. You can let a, lay a minifigure down in here to sleep, though it is a little bit tight because of the bats. And she, Molly just fell because I'm only one-handed here, but yes, you can get a minifigure in there. And in this center room is, uh, well, mostly nothing. There are a couple of portraits on the sides again and two skulls. Um, this would have been a great time to actually have included Buckbeak or something because Buckbeak stays upstairs. He technically stays in Sirius Black's room, um, but it would have been kind of cool to have him here. You can take your Buckbeak and put him there and it'll fill the space a lot better. The way they have it displayed is to put like one of the twins in this room with their extendable ear and it doesn't quite work as, as beautifully as there we go. And that makes sense. So they're extending a couple of levels. So you can kind of have the gang hang out in this room if you wanted to collect Harry, Ron, Hermione, Fred, George, Ginny, um, and Ron, if I didn't already say. In this room, there is a lot of standing space, so that is good at least. And then the final room, this is supposed to be Regulus Black's room, and the only clue to whose room it is, I'll show you in just a moment, there is just another very simplified modified bed, this time with no quilt sticker. There is a tiny map, a mug, and then something else that's kind of special up there above that windowsill. That is actually a new piece um, that I think that is really awesome that they included in this set because you don't actually see it in the scene that this movie is mostly supposed to take place in. You don't see it till the next one. It is the locket. It's Regulus Black's locket or uh, Salazar Slytherin's locket. This would have been the real one at the time. This is a secondary piece because they included two. Also, it is in the Ministry of Magic with Dolores Umbridge, but um, this is the first set that I've gotten, so this is a brand new piece for me seeing it here. It is very smart that they included it in the room. Um, we assume this is Regulus's room because that's where the locket was for a while. Um, and it's really cute that they added it because you don't, it's there in the Order of the Phoenix and they only realize it like two books later that it was there. Um, and so I think that that's super cute that it is there and they included that clue. Very good attention to detail Lego, but that is the set. Um, the top roofs are extremely bare. I would have loved to see something here like a rat or an old daily prophet like they kind of did um, with the Diagon Alley sets just to give something for the roofs would have been fun. But yeah, that's basically it. We did sacrifice a lot of internal space with this mechanism. Obviously, the side builds are only wedge rooms, um, and so it does take out a lot of space. Though in the movie, we don't see a huge amount of Sirius Black's very large house, so I think that this is doable. I also think that most people will probably display it from the front, um, so the back doesn't matter as much. And I think that the kids who get this, who want to play with it, I think there are plenty of fun things to play with and plenty of rooms to put characters in. You can definitely have enough room to add characters. So I think it's fine on that. Um, I just think it's extremely expensive. I think $120 is just, I don't know. It just seems like a lot. I felt like we paid sort of close to that for the chamber of secrets and got way more, um, with that initial Hogwarts castle build, but Nonetheless, the mechanical aspect of this is just so impressive to me. I think that is so cool and it looks great and it's very finished off. It has a very finished look from the front. Um, not as great on the back, but they did have to sacrifice somewhere. This is where Lego chose to make that sacrifice. So some people will like it, some people will not. But I am a pretty big fan and I like this set pretty well. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And as always, thanks so much for watching and until next time, I will see you guys later.